Hey guys, welcome back to the Destinations channel. I'm Sal Patera, and well, we're going to unpack some things for you today. As you may be aware, last night, Carnival Cruise Lines updated their masking and testing requirements to board their cruise ships. Now, if you haven't seen that video with the actual announcement, I'm going to link that right up above, and you can take a look at that and then come back to this video. But in the meantime, we're going to go section by section, and I'm going to unpack what it actually means to you when I come back right after this. Late last night, in the wee hours, Carnival issued a press release where they changed their testing requirements, their vaccination requirements, and even their onboard masking requirements that will begin on March 3rd. Now, as soon as I posted that press release, my phone started ringing off the hook literally in the wee hours of the morning with questions on what this means to the actual person boarding the Carnival cruise ship because the email and the press release was a little misleading. So let's go through it step by step and talk about how each portion is actually going to affect you and boarding your next Carnival cruise. In the first section, Carnival says that effective with cruises departing March 1st, masks on board will be recommended but not required. There may, however, be certain venues and events where masks will be required. So what does this mean? Well, the answer is we don't actually know. When Carnival first opened up, masks were required everywhere on board the cruise ship, but that quickly went by the wayside, and then Carnival was only required in specific situations like wearing them on the elevators, wearing them in most big show lounges, and in restaurants as you were going to and from your table. Of course, once you sat down, you no longer had to wear the mask. Well, it sounds like Carnival is going to lax those policies a little bit, but they don't actually say in this press release because they say that while they will be optional and encouraged, that they are still going to be required in certain areas and events. And we don't know what those certain areas and events are. It could very well be the exact same areas and events that were required beforehand. So the only way we're really going to know is to wait on that until March 1st and see what those actual areas and events are going to be. I would still recommend bringing a mask on board because you're probably going to end up needing it at least certain portions of your cruise. Second part says that Carnival will continue to meet the standard of vaccinated cruises, but certain children under five year old will not be included in any vaccination calculations and thus will not be required to receive an exemption to sale. Okay, so let's unpack that first. Let me be specific, you probably are going to still be required to have a vaccination in order to board your cruise with a couple of quick exceptions. Now, when we say vaccination, you must be fully vaccinated at least 14 days prior to your cruise. That means if you have the Johnson & Johnson's vaccination, you only need one shot. If you have any of the ones like Moderna that need two shots, you're required to have the second dosage at least 14 days prior to your cruise. Now, here's where it gets a little odd. First of all, Carnival is strongly advising that if you qualify for the booster shot, not only are you encouraged to get that booster, but they're actually going to give you an incentive to get the booster, which I'll talk about in a second. But they do say right on their website that Carnival can also start requiring that booster shot at any time with or without notice. So that means get the booster. If you qualify for it, you're gonna to need to have that booster at least seven days prior to your cruise to get the benefits. But again, you could show up and literally the night before your cruise, Carnival would say, hey, you know what? You now need the booster if you're required to get one or qualify to get one. So if you qualify for that booster, go ahead and get it at least seven days prior to your cruise because there's also going to be an exception when it comes to pre-cruise testing. And we're going to go over that in just a couple of moments. And the third portion in their press release said, effective with cruises departing March 1st, some additional flexibility in pre-cruising testing requirements will become available. Please visit the Carnival Have Fun Be Safe webpage for more information. So let's go over to that Have Fun Be Safe webpage and figure out exactly what Carnival is talking about and what it means for you for your upcoming cruise. The CDC requires pre-cruise testing for vaccinated guests aged two and older to be taken within two days prior to the sailing date. Important notice, Effective March 1st, guests who are up to date with their vaccinations, including receiving a booster if they're eligible, may make their test within three days prior to the sailing. 
Okay, so what does that mean to you? First of all, the changes that they mentioned aren't happening until March 1st. So if you're cruising in the next week or so, this isn't gonna to apply to you anyhow. But effective March 1st, there are gonna be a few changes when it comes to how you can get your pre-screening tested. First of all, I still recommend that you buy the at-home test that Carnival has on their website, and I'm gonna to explain to you why in a second. But let's go over the actual point of who needs to get tested and when. Now, effective March 1st, if you've received your vaccination, but you have not received a booster shot and you qualify for a booster shot, then you will have to have your test within two days of boarding the ship, which means if you're sailing on a Saturday, you have to have your test on either Thursday, Friday, or Saturday morning, as long as you're guaranteed to have those test results by the time of boarding. But if you're fully vaccinated, and that means you've had all of your vaccination shots, including a booster shot, if you're eligible, then you have up to three days before your cruise. So that means if you're sailing on a Saturday, you can receive your test on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, or Saturday morning, as long as you're guaranteed to get your test results in advance. So when I said this this morning, my phone lines just absolutely lit up. Did I buy my test for nothing? Now I'm going to be home in time. I can make an appointment with CVS or Walgreens and get my testing done there. Well, no, you haven't. And this is what I was mentioning before. Even though you probably will still be at home, and yes, you can probably make that appointment with CVS or Walgreens, which I strongly recommend doing, I would still buy the at-home test. And here's why. If you've had COVID, you probably already know this. If you've had testing at CVS or Walgreens, you may or may not know this, but those chains often cancel appointments. They either run out of tests completely or they have staffing issues and your appointment can be canceled at last moment. When I had COVID, I had to travel over an hour for each of my tests and both of them were canceled at last moment. Now, I know there's going to be some of you who write in the comments that I've had no problem with CVS or Walgreens. I'm going to get my test done there. And to those people, I say, great. I'm glad you've never had a problem until you do. And unfortunately, if you do have a problem that a lot of other people see and that test, you know, that test gets canceled right before your cruise, well, then most likely you're not going to be going on a cruise because there's no way you're going to get a test from someplace else, either at home or another facility that requires a reservation in advance three days before your cruise. So here's what I'm going to do for the future. I'm going to go ahead and make that test at CVS three days beforehand before I leave, and I will go take that test. But in the unlikely event that they cancel the test, they have to, uh, because they run out or they, they have staffing issues, or even if you get a false positive, I will have those at home tests so that I can still take my test and enjoy my cruise. So that's what I recommend. So for those of you who have been messaging me all morning, what do I do? Did I buy my test for nothing? Absolutely not. Even if you haven't bought your test, I strongly, strongly recommend that you have one of those at home tests handy. Like I said, better safe than sorry. You've already invested thousands of dollars in your cruise. What's 69 bucks more for two tests? That's literally a couple drinks on board. One other thing that I'm going to throw in here while we're talking about testing is it's very, very important that on your test results, your name be exactly the way it is on your boarding documents and your birthday be absolutely correct. When you're putting in that information on their website, make sure you double and triple check it. Once you take the test, it cannot be changed and then Carnival will not take your documents. And the same thing on your vaccination record as well. Make sure that everything lines up properly. You can't cross something out and fix it. It doesn't work that way. So if something is incorrect and your name is not exactly the way it's on your boarding documents, go back to where you got that vaccination and have them reissue a new vaccination card. Now, this is where Carnival officially puts something brand new on their website called Documents of Recovery. Guests, either fully vaccinated or not, who have recovered from COVID within three months of their sailing date do not need the required pre-cruise COVID test before embarkation if they are at least 10 days past their COVID-19 infection, have no symptoms, and present documentation of recovery from COVID from their healthcare provider. All right, so this one last thing to unpack is that if you've had COVID in the last 90 days and it's documented, which means you saw a physician for it, and it was at least 10 days ago and you have no further symptoms, 
then your physician can actually write you a letter documenting that you had COVID in the last 90 days, that you no longer have COVID and that you're symptom free. And that alone will be good enough to get you on board the cruise ship with your vaccination record. So you won't need to have to take any of those at home tests. Or if you're one of those people who had COVID and is running a positive test result long term, even though you no longer have COVID, this is your way onto the cruise ship. Just get that doctor's note proving it and you'll be allowed on board. Okay, so we unpacked all of the stuff that's changing or stuff that they say is changing. Let me know what you think of these changes in the comments down below. I do try to answer as many of them as I can, but I do read almost all of them. Until next time, I'll see you very soon up on the Lido deck.